Hello and welcome to episode 11 of the Coach's Corner podcast. Today we are joined by ex Blackburn Rovers and current Southport fullback Jack Doyle. But before we get into this week's episode, make sure to give us a follow on Instagram and Twitter to stay up to date. Up to date. The Instagram is the Coach's Corner underscore podcast and the Twitter is Coach's underscore corner underscore. So Jack, how are you doing? It's all right. Good, yeah. Nice one for having me. Um, so how's this obviously it's been a difficult situation the last few months obviously with lockdown and coming out of it how's your preparation been for the new season yeah it's been good obviously uh, the, the lockdown and stuff um, obviously it's been the same for everyone but you've sort of kept, kept, you keep yourself fit and um, you know when we got called back we were doing the you know, Crosby Beach sessions running up and down on the um, sand hills and all that and then we uh, had a few training sessions then we were straight back into the games really so yeah. you know it's going, it's going good at the moment Obviously you've had a few tests as well in pre-season playing teams obviously in the leagues above um, but that can only be a good thing really going forward it gives a bit of, a, bit of momentum and obviously you've got to be at your best from the get-go haven't you really? Yeah, no yeah that's it um, we played Blackpool and Barrow um, Probably done. We've done well for ourselves, to be honest. But um, you know, it's a good test. That's what you want to do. You want to play against the the um, higher teams, and you know, test yourself and know where you're at, yeah. really. And um, yeah, so that's it, really. Yeah. So we're going to go back to the start, and we're just going to build through. Obviously, so we're going to start off with you know, growing up with football. So where did it all start for you? Uh, well, when I was probably around under sixes, I think I was um, under six, under eight. So I was playing for Mags Youth. On a Saturday, um, or some kind of way, it was Saturday or on Sunday. On the pitches, was it? No, it was on the um, the Reggie Smith pitches. Yeah. When um, I think the Gatska schools there now, we used to like play at the back of there. Um, always remember it. Like it was, yeah, I loved it. So I played there until I was under ten. I was playing for Moss Leal as well on a Sunday. Um, up on the Southerly there, play on the Southerly. Um, so I was playing Saturday, Sunday, played there till under 10s, I was enjoying it, it was good. We had um, used to play like Woodley and Legion, they were all like rivals and when I was playing Mag Youth, so you know, it was it was good, I enjoyed it like. Um, and then after that, it was just scouts come and watched. Um, Blackburn come to me mum and dad after the game and just said, you know, we've been watching for a while and um, you know, I would like them to come up on a, on a, on a trial basically. Um, so from there, went on trial to Blackburn. I remember I was on trial for two weeks, trained, play game, and then um, yeah, so so I literally two weeks, two yeah. weeks in, and then I always remember my first game played in Stoke away. I sounded a centre bit, so yeah. um, I was always centre bit when I was younger, um, and then yeah, played Stoke away and scored the first game for them. So obviously was made up, but didn't have the best of game, so. Got the all um, bollocks on the way home from my mum and dad and that, so <laughs> nah, it was good. Um, yeah, so that, that was it really. But at the time when I was on trial at Blackburn, Evan, Evan Scouts come to me, son, the Saturday League manager, and said, you know, we want to take Jack um, on trial, but me and Manji wanted to keep me to the end of the season because we were, you know, we were, we were about to have like a um, good chance of winning the league and stuff like that really. So I come back, yeah, I was obviously got it like, but... Um, yeah, it was good, and then there was that Blackburn, yeah, so I was it really, yeah. yeah. You find that a lot with academies, don't you, that a lot of lads who come in, uh, the scouts will say, oh, he's a centre mid, or he's an attacker midfielder, but then <coughs> once the academy coaches see them play, they find those different aspects of the game, you think right, he's more suited to play full-back, or centre-forward, or centre-half, yeah. because obviously, playing against grassroots players, you get that space which you wouldn't get against the academy players, yeah. and then, obviously, the positional side is just completely different, you know, I remember... You know, we had lads come into Morecambe who, you know, we got told, oh, he's an attacking midfielder, but then we seen him play, if he's, if he's a good dribbler, dribbler, sorry, we're going to play him out wide because he can get mm. at people. So it's like, I don't think there's always a set in stone position until you start getting older. You know, you could be 18 and you still don't find your best position sometimes, do you? Yeah. Like, it's, it's crazy how it can change so quickly. Yeah, no, that was the case with me, right? Like, um, I was playing centre mid for quite a lot of my time and then once I went to 11 aside, that was where I kind of found myself getting pushed back to to left back really but since I, the first time I played there I loved it and then obviously that's me being the um, position ever since really so yeah. no you know you're right you, you don't really peep your old stories all different players starting as a, as a striker and ended up being a centre half and stuff like that but you know I think like as you get older you kind of know what you're good at and what you're not so good at and then you know you 
style your game around yeah. your your strongest attributes really and then yeah. see where it takes you. I think Carragher started I think he was a centre <coughs> forward until he was about sixteen, wasn't he playing for Bootle and yeah. stuff and the schoolboys yeah. and then they must have realised yeah. <laughs> he's not gonna <laughs> score many goals yeah, that's like it. that. So obviously you joined Blackburn <coughs> at a young age. When you were at that age, did it really sink into into you thinking, Oh, I'm playing, you know, at an academy and did you fully understand it or, mm-hmm. or did it take <coughs> three years until maybe you reached like into like the YDP phase when you started thinking, okay, look at the opportunity you've got, or was it as soon as you joined the academy, you thought, um, you know, this is a massive opportunity for yeah. me, you've got to take it, because obviously when you're a kid, you, you just think about enjoying your football, don't you, and just playing week in, week out, and I think sometimes kids can just think of like, oh, sometimes the coaches or whatever the information they're passing on, it, it can be forgetful, um, and it's obviously been in a pressure environment where you're playing, you know, still for two year contracts and mm-hmm. things like that. For you, when you joined Blackburn, was it instantly okay? I know what I've got to do to, you know, go to the next level each time. Or did you find it difficult adapting to that? At first, at first, it was hard because I wasn't the best of players to be honest with you. Like I would come in as centre midfielder, and it was, you know, it was. I was just more or less a bit consistent and kind of, you know, I wasn't the best, but I'd be give you a six, seven, eight out of ten mm-hmm. every game, do you know what I mean? But it was, I, I, I remember just remember the first few sessions, like the difference between obviously playing grassroots and then that jump to, you know, there's a lot of good players, like the most of good players when I was a young kid. Um, it was just like scary, like, but, you know, you, you realise as you get older, you like, they, you kind of, push past them and they, they kind of like stay where it, stay at the level they are and that was like definitely the case with me because if I was when I was 10 I would definitely wouldn't have thought I would have ended up making my debut for Blackburn and you know doing some of the things that, are, that I've done really but um, yeah the, the, the jumps the jumps massive so um, yeah it was we were training Tuesday Thursdays and that so um, we were, my mum would take me up mum and dad would take me up there after school yeah, but it was a bit of a job, it's a bit of a drive, and like to be a yeah. mom and dad to see you up there on a Tuesday and Thursday nights, and, then and got a game at the weekend yeah, so well. a game like my middles put away on a Saturday. Yeah. It's like yeah. you know, and it was hard, it was hard often really, but you know, obviously I appreciate having the other one for yeah. me and stuff like that. Yeah, that commitment started in the early eighties, wasn't it? For you as a yeah. player, and and you know, as your parents, and you know, as you get older, you start to see things obviously differently. Obviously, when you're a kid, you you're allowing you on your parents, and uh, obviously for other players, whoever takes them to, to football, to kind of like provide them with that information of you know you, you need to be better than him and, and her or whatever but when you started to get into like you know 15s 16s the 18s did you start looking at the lads around you and think I'm better than you or was it a case of the fact that I'm going to work harder than you and was the lads yeah. there and you were thinking you're not good enough to be here and there was lads that maybe nowadays are good enough that you think back then you weren't and there's like maybe lads now who've might have dropped right down leagues or not even playing and but when they was 15 mm. 16 um, they were a great player and we, we spoke to, when we spoke to Tom uh, Brewitt he said that you know there was lads who were like at the world at the feet but once like those contracts come and they just can't deal with it did you see the, any any of that there when you were at Blackburn? Yeah there's, I think that's everywhere to be honest with you you, you know so I was there 10s 11s 12s so I was more or less you know just about in the team it was obviously better players than me then it come to like 14s 15s um and then Everton come again to to come and get me like so I um, always remember going to around um, Finch Farm having a look and stuff but obviously I knew a few, a few of the lads at Everton Joe Williams and Ryan Ledson and John Joe at the time but to me I was like starstruck like going there thinking this is Everton like I'm the best staying at Blackburn because Blackburn at the perimeter at the time so mm. it was it was ours so obviously I choose to stay at Blackburn but looking back probably should have made the jump to Everton, but you never know, I might not have got as, you know, in like far as I have because the standard of players that Everton there, especially if you have someone as a centre midfield, eh, there's too many good players that are, you know, more, like who uh, were better than me yeah. at the time, do you know what I mean? So they're all different things pan out differently, like but so from there, fifth first thing on the fifteenth, that was the time where I thought, you know, I'm doing I'm doing well here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because it comes to the time when you're from the fifteens where you playing with the 16s so I was one of the handful of players that were going up with the 16s at the time but there was um, as again but was, as, as I said before I wasn't the best player I was still like you know consistent and, and, um, 
and stuff like that. But then there was two two or three players who were um was another fifteen lad who was playing for the eighteens. Um it's a big jump, yeah, he was playing for the eighteens and he was, like scored the winner for them. And United to win the to win the league for like the eighteen league and that. Okay. So like um there was him and there's another two lads. He must be feeling when he's at that moment thinking I'm gonna make it this. I'm gonna be massive. Yeah. It, it's something like that. All it takes is an injury, isn't it? And it's a massive come down. Or you know, the week after you dropped or you play bad, it's it can change quickly. Football, as you know, it can it. And obviously, one week you can be the best player on the pitch. One week you can have a stinker, <coughs> and then the press the, the killing you. The next week you have a boss game, and they're saying, "Oh, he's the best thing since sliced bread." It's a, yeah. it's very cutthroat, isn't it? But I think a lot of a lot of times people forget about them how that can affect the player mentally. So obviously we're going to say about you know making your first first team debut. How how did you deal with that? Like when when did you find out that you were going to be you know in that first team squad? And you know how did you deal with it? Obviously the pressure of it was it excitement? Was it nerves? Was it just like this is everything I've been working towards for the past mm. seven, eight to ten years? Yeah. Well, that come when I was twenty one, I think. But beforehand. Um, so for the for the eighteen to the twenty three years, like obviously you always want to play at that next level. So I was at the twenty three years, uh, I was training with the first team quite a bit when I was nineteen. Well, I was playing eighteen, nineteen, and um, Paul Lambert was the manager at the time. And um, there was a time where I was training with him a bit, I was doing well, and um, he pulled me into his office on the Friday when I was nineteen and said, um, "Jack, we're gonna start tomorrow against Nottingham Forest away." In the championship, so um, so obviously I got my own buzzing, like <laughs> family buzzing, like agents buzzing, like I'll oh, we'll come down tomorrow and stuff like that. Um, like obviously, so I've went on my Friday night, like can I stand tomorrow in the, in the champ and that? Yeah. And then um, so anyway, it comes the next day, like I was just mad, like seeing my name on the wall, though, like the like Shane Duffy, Grant Stanley, um, Danny Graham, and that and just thought playing tomorrow can't wait for this so anyway got to the, the ground and that mad and then um, I um, so obviously you're, you're pre-match and stuff like that and then the team's going up so I'm sitting at the back and my legs are shaking like <laughs> anyway my me, me names are not on there and I'm thinking what's going on here it's mad doing this so but all the 13 lads knew I was going to start because yeah, it, yeah. obviously got, it gets around there quick like yeah. the day, from the day before so anyway um that happened. Never wasn't even on the bench or not. Never gave me a reason why he never what? Um, played me. So after that, I was absolutely like devastated. Like, like yeah, yeah. gutted. Like mentally, like I was. It was it was tough. Like, but you know. Um, did you have? Did, did you have anything there for you to then go and like talk to someone about that or like you know you have to kind of like keep it between you know you as players, but you don't want to. You don't want to be talking to other players too much, do you? Because you don't know sometimes who you can trust. And then the only people you really talk to is your family. And then you know you go to the gaffer, and but you don't want to make a bad impression on him, do you? Yeah. Because he's still in charge. And you know next week things can change. And yeah. like we say about football, change quickly. But for you being a young player and getting called into his office and he's telling you you're starting the next day, you go home absolutely yeah. buzzing, and then you turn up the next day. That's a big thing to come down to. Was it literally for you then? Keep your head down, keep going, and then you'll keep get the opportunity. Yeah, it was really, but um, it was mad at the time. Danny Graham was, it was a mad one. So the day after, and sorry, on the Monday after, their um, secretary come to come to me and said, um, "What's your um, what's your like, what's your bank details, stuff like that." So I'm thinking, why is she asking for my bank details, stuff like this? A bit weird. Anyway, like she said, "Oh, Danny, Danny Graham wants them. Wants your bank details." So I was like, "Why?" Anyway. <laughs> Comes to like the day after, I look on my account, Danny Graham's transferred the appearance fee that I would have got if I was started. Jeez. So, like, I was like, what the f- crazy this? Like, obviously, yeah. he didn't have to do that, like, but yeah, yeah. Um, like, he, anyone you, you speak to about him, like, just a top, top fella, like, yeah. you know, he didn't have to do that, but I must say, like, that that equal to like not make me my debut but just yeah. that gesture made me think oh no it's like, a bit of a pick it up yeah, isn't it like yeah, that, yeah. You know, one of the most seasoned pros in the team has yeah. like took that time and gone you know he's basically kind of looked out looked out for yeah, there, hasn't he? Yeah. Gone, you know if it was me if it was him sorry he'd be thinking I wish someone might be able to do the same that's nice there that, that there's actually people involved in there that have got that, that thought of you know how much of a letdown it must have been for you after oh, being yeah, told it was good tonight. yeah it was good tonight so after that like I was hitting, I was 
I was hit and miss with injuries to be honest with you with my hamstrings and it's kind of stops stop starts after that and they had a few different changes of managers so it wasn't really like um smooth really so and then I made my debut against Coventry I come on um the Carabao Cup um nearly scored as well I was got to nearly scored but as you said I didn't think I was going to come on to be honest. I was sitting on the bench, just you know, was one of them making the numbers up really. Yeah, yeah. Or um, so when I come on, obviously I was nervous. Like, but once you get your first touch or first header out the way, it's it's fine really. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I made my debut. And was obviously buzzing. Um, and then I, I just started. I think I got. I think it was like two weeks later I got injured, and it was just hit and miss really. Just that's why I had to obviously go out on loan and try and, you know, start again, get a fresh start. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was that, really. How did you find uh, the loan system? Did it, was it good for you just to get that first-team football? Was it obviously difficult moving away um, for a while from obviously being obviously at home for the first part of your career and obviously Blackburn, it's a little bit down the road, only an hour away, to then obviously being away from people. Did, did you find that it was good for you to have that for it? Potentially in the future, or was yeah, it quite it, difficult? Yeah, it was good. I went to Derry in Ireland, and um, that first didn't think could be a good kind of like move to be fair. But once I got over there, it was you know it was good. Like um, I enjoyed I enjoyed the football. Like away from home, that was the toughest bit, obviously. But I adjusted quickly and settled in right quick and um, played around. It's my day season starts like February and ends in uh, November, so played all of the games there but they wanted me to stay stay there and take over my contact to Blackburn for the next year and a half I think it was but I just thought I'd come back home and try and see what options are there but looking back I probably should have stayed another year or something over there but you know it was just one of them really so anyway I got back from there and then I went to uh, Maidstone on loan in the conference I think got to the town of Blackburn they kind of I was kind of saying I want, want to leave kind of away and they wouldn't like they wouldn't pay me up and all stuff like that. Um, so I went to Maidstone for. T -t 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 I was meant to be there for three months, but I uh, got in. I played eight games, done, done well. Um, and then I got injured on a Friday, snapped my ankle. Um, and then that was it, right? That was when I was on the sideline, sideline for a good six, seven months. And that was the last year of my contract. And yeah, it was, that was kind of how it panned out, really. Yeah. It was tough, but yeah. And then, obviously, we, we've spoke about this uh, before, about, you know, leaving Blackburn and how you dealt with it and stuff. Obviously, for you, how, how was it when, obviously, you realise you're leaving such a massive club like that? And then, you know, what then followed for you instantly yeah. after that? It was tough because I was I, I left when I was injured, you see. So, it wasn't like I had all these teams lined up to come and take me because yeah. I'm out of the shop window, do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So... Um, it was hard because I never, I never, I never had teams lined up because, as I said. But um, so mentally, like for the past, so when I left there that year, uh, it was tough. Like I'd say recently, kind of like lockdown. So kind of got, kind of got over it in a way. To be honest with you, yeah, it was a tough time and stuff. Um, but when I left, um, Liam at Southport, he just kept ringing me up and stuff, and you know, I made up a just made up of um, Sam, Sam for Southport really and just enjoying, enjoying my football again. In terms of like, you know, that when you're leaving Blackburn, some people can take it in the fact of like, oh, well, I played for Blackburn, I deserve to be playing in the Championship or, or League One. Was there any hesitation from you when, when Southport rang to say, well, no, to be honest, I'm going to like, I think I should be playing more. Was it right? I just want to play football now and yeah. I need, I want minutes uh, uh, under my belt, you know, getting more experience and then see what see what happens after that yeah at first I said like hold it off for a bit and because obviously thought the jump from Blackburn Southport quite a bit but mm. um, I didn't factor in obviously I've been out for seven months injured and um, if, 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 if it was a different case and I was fit and I was in the shop window yeah I'd probably hang about and yeah. see what see what was there but um, you know looking back I just thought I just need to be playing every week and enjoy it again and you know, it's not too far from home, and um, you know, it's and he's got me enjoying me football again, and there's, yeah, yeah it's a good forward to, well, yeah, it's it? good. Yeah. What would you say the biggest difference is between the football league and non-league? Because you know, nowadays we're seeing teams even in like 
step five they're not in non-league you know they've got millionaires backing them and there's a lot more coverage of it on social media and you know even now we see some of the fa cup games in the um, the qualifying uh, rounds you know stream live online and on bbc and stuff it, so there's it's a lot more coverage now compared to back in the 80s and the 90s but in terms for you what would you say is like the main differences between obviously the lads who are playing in the Premier League and the Championship compared to lads at Southport and you know York mm. City, all them teams like that. Yeah, I feel like higher up you go the more time you're having the ball to be honest with you, it's more like a mm. chess match. Like if you make one bad move or you come and drag, you step out and press, people will just play around you. Whereas the lower you go, the more in your face, and yeah. it's more of like a you try and outrun the opponent really mm-hmm. um, but I think for what's kind of kicked long league off obviously from Va- Jamie Vardy like yeah. making that jump and everyone's kind of focusing on long league now so it's a good platform to try and like like myself to kind of rebuild my career again and like you know stage what I can do mm-hmm. but um, I think yeah it's obviously I think it's obviously got better over the years and stuff because there's more money getting pumped into the lower leagues and stuff like that but you know it's only a good thing for for um, everyone involved, really. Yeah, I, I mean, I watch quite a bit of non-league myself, and you know, you see some of the players who are in there. You know, I came to watch you the other week against Warrington, and you've got Jack Dunn who played for Liverpool and yeah. you know played in the league for Tramway and stuff, and he's playing for Warrington Town. I, I think that must be, you know, how he must have, you know, I don't know or nothing, but you know, mentally, how much it must have affected him leaving them clubs. Yeah. You know, we can either go one way, like yourself, where you know. You took time, you dealt with it, you went and played football, you, and you know, you're enjoying it now. And obviously, as time goes on, only obviously we'll see what happens in terms of going back up the leagues. But like, some players really struggle, and like I think the mental side of the game, obviously, it's getting a bit more coverage now. But do you think sometimes that clubs and managers and stuff they can really like, they can they don't really see that much um, they don't really take as much notice as what they should sometimes with players you know obviously if you have a bad game or you're in a bad bit of form do you think sometimes it's brushed under the carpet and it's just like oh, it's just not playing well we're going to drop him in this <clears throat> or do you think nowadays that it, you find that there's a little bit more help for players because obviously you can never know what what same yeah. state of play is in can you yeah uh, I don't really think there's much help as what the kind of saying to be honest with you because mm-hmm. like from experience myself, like you'd be at a team for twelve years, you pro- since ten years of age, and like you program to like that daily routine, and like you you like told what to do, what time to be there. They want that took away from you. It's like, well, what 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 do you do now? Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Where I think it's not just me. Probably a majority of every single footballer that's been released from a, from a club, they haven't contacted and said, "How are you doing?" Do you know, like. Yeah. Um, Whereas I believe that when someone gets released from a football, football football club, they should like at least have a phone call to say, you know, what what you're up to, or you have you found a team, or you, you know, are you starting university, or you do you want any help find, and what kind of path you want to go down. Mm. Whereas that's why some people kind of get lost, and people don't have to like their, um, you know, people don't have like the what's the word like the like the courage to go and ask for help yeah. do you know what I mean and like mm-hmm. some people just think oh well, I'll just get I'll get on with it and it'll be fine but mm-hmm. nine times out of ten I'll come back to bite you and that that mental side you'll keep building keep building you come to a point where you just explode and like yeah. it's that's why I really do believe like it's just like people just need to kind of like help help like yeah. you know for football that get released mm-hmm. really because when, obviously when you get released from a club you've obviously got doubts about your ability haven't you as well because they're releasing you for the reason or you're not getting a new contract for the reason sometimes it's just down to you know the manager saying listen we've got might have four players in this position and mm-hmm. you know they've got more experience or but sometimes lads can it, it can be down to injury and it's like how do they deal with that if they've yeah. got no one around if it's the family they need like professionals to be like right how can we help you so it's someone just to talk to isn't it because you've all you're all have feelings after the game you know if you play well you you're made up if you have a bad game you know you still want to talk to people about it and like you're saying there's just not there's just not enough there for players to think about and I think sometimes you know the managers don't want that side of them to come out as well because they mm. don't want to be known as tough and you know yeah but I think sometimes they've got to be more approachable in terms of you know if a player's having issues either on the pitch or off the pitch they've got to be able to go to the manager because that's the man in charge at the end of the day and, yeah you know for them they've got to get the right people around them I think Liverpool done it a couple of years ago 
Um, and he used to send the players to like a psychiatrist before every game. Um, yeah. Don't know if it's still happens now, but you know, them, them facilities have got to be available for players because you know when you look at the four corner model that the FA do, you know, technical and tactical, psychological, uh, physical and social. And you know that f- psychological and social corners, you know, the players not comfortable in a group and you know mentally not correct. And for me, they're not going to perform on on the football yeah. pitch. I think with the players it's like they don't want to show weakness to mm-hmm. like a, ma- a manager because if yeah. you show weakness to the manager he's going to think well can, he, can, he, can he cope on 40,000 that skidding on him yeah. do you know what I mean yeah. so that's what because that, that's what they kind of not going to it's a, it's, a, you know, it's, a, it's a business at the end of the day and they want their job their jobs are on the line yeah. so whereas like as I said players that's what I'm saying players need to like be honest and man just to be honest because I believe honesty is the best policy like if you mm-hmm. just don't beat him around the bush like if you're gonna if you're gonna be playing the rather than rather you say to, sorry you're not gonna probably play here try and find the club elsewhere yeah. so at least you know in your mind clearly that you're there's no doubt is it it's yeah, clear yeah. It's, and then you go okay yeah. right I can deal with that I can yeah. take a couple of weeks a couple of weeks to just okay whereas if you're getting told ah uh, you might play next week, you know, like with you with, with, with Paul Lambert saying to you, you're in the squad tomorrow and then you turn up and you're not there. For you to then go home when all your family are thinking he's starting today, all that mm. hard work, and yeah. then you go home, obviously you come back from it, but there might be lads and that's that then. Because there might be lads who, who suffer so bad with confidence, which you're getting players, isn't it? Yeah. And it takes them four or five years to really let it out on the pitch and stuff. And then one moment can kill people, can't it? Yeah, yeah, no, that's it. There is, I feel like, um, some players, especially myself, we I put so much pressure on myself as a young kid, like, like, um, which kind of people think when you get injured, you like you're not looking after your body or whatever. Whereas with, with the case with me is was, I was working too hard, like I wasn't working smart with what I was doing. I was just obviously wanted to get better, but I wasn't listening to my body. That's why obviously I was breaking down all the time. Mm-hmm. So that's why I stopped start. But now, you know, I've learned from it. And now, now what to do and what not to do at certain times yeah. that I can. You know, affect me on the pitch or whatever. Because I believe when I was probably a Blackburn, probably like a handful of games where I was actually fresh, like going into a game. Mm. Like it was just, it was mad. But no, it's as you said, like you know, players, players these days just need to, you know, speak out more and just like you know, be honest with how they're feeling. Not, mm. Don't cover up because it'll come back to bite you one day. Definitely. So one last question before we're going to move on to you know. Premier League and a few little bits and bobs about kits and boots and stuff like that. So for you, what's what's like the goal or the challenge now for you in the future for your career? Is it to maintain it now with Southport, build up the performances and get in the league and maybe is it moving into coaching when you finish <laughs> your career or is it I want to make the best as we as I can for as long as I can? Yeah, well, I want to try, try and obviously play as high as I can possibly. Um, so... At the moment, obviously trying um, being consistent and staying fit and playing every week um, for Southport. Um, I've got another two years left there, so obviously you want to try and um, keep you know keep progressing and going higher. Uh, look, probably looking to do me badges on the side just to obviously football doesn't last forever, so we need to look past that. Um, starting uni as well, so part time as well to kind of you know something to fall back on as well, but. Um, yeah, so that, that's it really. Just want to keep, you know, playing every week and see where it takes me. If nothing, if nothing comes of it, I know I've given me all and enjoy my time at Southport. And and if something happens, happy days. And I'm ready for it. You know, I'm all ready to give, ready to give uh, me all. Good stuff. Okay, so we're gonna start off now, looking at boots, kits. We love talking about boots and kits on this podcast. So for you, so we're gonna do past and present in terms of boots growing up. What was the what was the go to pair for you? Um, the Preds with the um, the tongue. Oh. The, um, and I remember the black and red ones and the um, the Champions League the black black and gold ones with the um, yeah with, with the, the white trim yeah, yeah. yeah with the tongue they were the best like I thought and the we used to wear the F 50s as well the F 50s units as well like nice. this or them two would probably be my best boots like yeah. What about nowadays? What do you what do you, what do you th- what would you say is like because obviously they've developed it's more synthetic leather yeah. than leather boots now isn't it are you still try and go for those like pred style ones with the leathers or yeah a bit like I wear the, um, the copers the the like the yellow copers nice. at the moment like um, I just feel like the comfiest boots I've had in a while like whereas yeah I feel like the 
je staat dan niet zo huis en je doet wel eens like het is niet zo huis er eigen en dat zo ja maar eens dat de bed en lever en stuff like that really nice you can't beat the preds as well no. the preds are, yeah. the, they were just everyone for growing up it was, it was either them or like the, you know Ronaldinho and Ronaldo yeah. and Mike Boots wasn't it yeah that's true um, and then kits growing up it could it can be a kit like internationals or like teams over abroad or yeah. even Premier League kits was there a kit you had yourself which you'd like if someone could give you it now you'd just still put it on <laughs> and go to the game in I like that obviously the Everton kit and Everton fan aren't I so I like that um I used to like the pink and black Everton kit the old one Right. Yeah, the away the, one. I think the way like yeah, the, the stripes, the lacrosse yeah. sports ethos. I think yeah. that one. Yeah, <laughs> I like that one. Me, um, just a few of the Everton ones really. Um, yeah, that one. I, I would say. What else would I say? The other one. The Spain kits. You love the old Spain kits. The one where they won the World Cup. Yeah, and that yeah. Type of ones. Yeah, they were just yeah. like clean. Yeah, just, just like, like, nothing too like special about them. It was yeah. just like the red and gold, and then. They had like trim and blue sometimes. Yeah, the blue well. one, that was the. It was nice yeah, that. Yeah. That period so like when they ones. won the World Cup in the Euros, all the kits were class. Yeah, really. yeah, so them too. Stephen Kits and the Spain Kits used to wear it all the time. Yeah. Like. Is there any you've seen this season that um, that have caught your eye so far? Like the Evans again, obviously Evans. Um, Probably the nicest kit they've had for a few years, yeah, isn't it, since the Nike The Kanye one's nice and the. Um, I like the away one as well, yeah. All three of them are nice, really. Don't like Liverpool's away one, like, to be honest with you, that green it's one. It's a hoisy one, yeah. I'm a bit, I'm, I'm not a fan of all the patterns and that. Yeah. The home kit, I like the home kit with the white yeah. trim down the yeah, side. It's nice, but we spoke about kits last week, and for you, for the kids, like, me personally, I just like it if it's quite plain and the colours. So, like, I like Leeds' as kits because it's literally white with blue stripes, yeah. and it's just like, for me, it's just, it's just dead nice and clean. Arsenal's the same, whereas, like, you know, Chelsea. Chelsea's there, kids, I don't know if you've seen it, it's like a mix of Crystal Palaces. No, United's there, kids, is like a zebra cross. Yeah. Is it like, oh, do yeah, you like the ones that go out there a little bit, or are you more like classic? More, and it's like yeah. Barcelona, Real Madrid, quite plain. Yeah, more classic, really. Like, yeah, the United, the zebra one. <laughs> it's shocking, that league. Yeah. And would you have to be paid to wear that one? No, nightmare that, you know, couldn't wear that, me. I'd say no. <laughs> but no, yeah, classic one, me. Just classic, classic colours and. Yeah, that's it. None of these fancy colours and patterns and all that. Yeah. Like, no, not me. Oh, nah. To be fair, your kit's quite nice. The Southport one, yeah, the white nice. with, the, with the black in there. It's yeah. like a bit of a, like a grey silver in it, in it, involved yeah. in it. Involved in it. It's quite nice. That. Yeah, it's nice. What did, did you make of the um, the games this weekend? Just gone then. Was there any teams and performances that um, that caught your eye? Even Leeds, Leeds for Leeds, done well. Like because in the first game back and like mm. what sixteen years or fifteen years or something. Like yeah. you know, they done well. You for the people go there. Showed a bit of confidence, didn't yeah, he, well, they Because, you yeah. know, some teams could come up and just literally try and sit back. He hasn't yeah. tried to change his style and, you know, he's nearly come away with the result. But do you think, you know, you make you get that third equaliser, do you think even though he wants to play this brand of football, which I completely agree with, do you think a 3-3 opening day of the season, you go, you know what, we're going to come away with something here. And, but I understand them trying to go for the win, but I felt after the third goal... Liverpool just took control in and Leeds didn't really have any chances after that third goal apart from the free kick. Yeah. I just thought that, you know, if it was the last game of the season and you needed the point to stay up, you'd take the points. So just because it's the first game of the season, do you really change? Should you change your methods or? I don't know. It's probably it's more or less managing game management really yeah. and like shutting up shop when you you know you're playing as the champions. Like you want to at least that get a point from there. To say that yeah. <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> but uh, you know, yeah, thought you done well, especially you know, we all some Evan. Yeah, I thought Evan done well like um against Tottenham, like probably the best I've seen him play for a long time. Especially the midfield three, like yeah. and uh, Rodriguez, like you can just tell he's like like leagues above everyone, like mm -hmm. but hopefully you can keep him fit this year, like yeah. and Midfield's um, massive, isn't yeah. it? In football, if you lose the midfield battle, then you tend to lose the game. Yeah, I yeah. think yeah, I think the game's won and lost the midfield. Like if you haven't got a good midfield like you know it's you putting pressure on your back four and yeah. it's just you can't really get going whereas yeah. the other day like you just kind of busted on the ball and mm. you're moving it well especially the first 15 minutes like I put everyone surprised yeah. the way they haven't played uh, especially with the three in there because he's used to playing a 4-4-2 isn't he so you um, kind of mixed it up but you know it's exciting times so definitely you had a lot more balance in there didn't yeah. you a mix of you know, players who can win the ball back, players who can drive with the ball, players are good in possession. It was it was good to see that. And obviously, I think there was a few good performances from Everton from players who have been questioned a lot in the past previously. In terms, you know, Coleman since he's come back from that broken leg, yeah. he's he hasn't been the same. You know, the two centre halves have been questioned quite a lot. Keane and Mina, and I thought Pickford as well. Mm, yeah, Pickford. Game. So yeah. Maybe those lads coming in, 
can you know really boost you know the ones around them say okay we've got to step our levels up if we really want to you know push for that top six top seven this season um and then i think you know we were just talking before we came on about chelsea it was a bit of a i know they beat, beat brighton but it was a bit of a an awkward performance from them i thought yeah yeah i don't know i feel like the, i feel they've got too many players at the moment like to kind of you know keep happy and mm. I think it'd be tough obviously I, I do think they'll be in top four like but I feel like they probably might need a, a, a centre half or them, yeah yeah there's um, obviously the players are quality like but if you can the old GL to get them and stuff like that you know they, they'll have a good goal this year it's like. fitting them in isn't it obviously yeah. we've seen Havertz play on the right side yesterday which is you know I, I've watched him quite a lot in the Bundesliga he doesn't play there he plays he can play as a false nine and be on the striker I just thought I know it's getting them players out there, probably more for the fans than anyone. But you know, if he'd have signed for Liverpool, he wouldn't have started that game, and he would yeah. certainly wouldn't have started out wide, right? I just thought, you know, first game of the season, just put the players in who you've seen the most of. Obviously, Pulisic and Ziyech were injured. You know, you've still got Barkley, you've still got other players on the bench there. I did think Werner looks sharp though. Yeah, yeah, he's rapid. Yeah, he looks like. good player Werner. Like um, you still got Pulisic just to come back and. Zayech and you know the Chilwell, Chilwell, yeah, they've still yeah, got a lot, lot of so especially Pulis, it's like he's one of the one of their best players, like but yeah, I think when once they're all fit and back, like I think mm. they'll have a they'll have a good goal, I reckon. Yeah. And then obviously this weekend there's some big games again. Um Everton kicking off the weekend against West Brom. It's it's one of them ones though, because I was watching the Tottenham documentary and you know, Mourinho after they beat City, um at home literally said the next game's the toughest one after you've had a big result like that yeah. because you know coming down from playing a team up there like you were saying about pre-season friendlies you know you play Blackpool Accrington Stanley Barrow and then you play teams who are a division below you it's hard for you to, uh, to, to not, not to get uh, you know excited for them games but it's almost like when you play the, the teams who are above you you get less of the ball so you're working hard and then the next minute you've got 60% possession so for Everton at the weekend I can imagine they're going to have 60% possession yeah. whereas at the weekend they were winning the ball back in midfield counter attacking getting the ball to Richarlis into Calvert-Loon to Hammers, and really attacking that back back forward at Tottenham so it's a good test for them to come away from that isn't it against West Brom who obviously suffered defeat last week <clears throat> we'll be looking to get their first point on the board so it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how they wrap up can you see anything else but an Everton win there? Yeah, hopefully, like, like hopefully he can carry on the performance on the other day, really. But, um, you know, it's just, hopefully they just get a bit of consistency this year. And, you know, if they end up drawing or losing his West Brom, it's probably back to the old Everton, really, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully, um, hopefully they keep the standards and just yeah. get the results. And then we've got Arsenal against West Ham. Obviously, we're going to get into your predictions in a minute. Arsenal, for me, the third goal he scored the other day against Fulham was was, yeah. was superb. And Adam Adam Willian to their to their um, lineup was a big boost. That one three looks sharp with um, Aubameyang and Lacazette as well. Do you think Arsenal have got a chance to do really well this season, or do you still think there's too many issues in terms of with the defence or you know central midfield that will make them just be on the fringes of? Of that top four. Yeah, I think the front three are like they're one of the best about really so much, yeah, but it's just they'll probably try and outscore teams, like that's what they'll probably try and do because defensively, you know, they're not the best. And in the midfield, it's just no like nail down player that you think is gonna start every week. Yeah. Whereas, you know, the front three you know they're gonna start every week. So it's it's gonna be a tough one for them, but I think mm-hmm. with our tether and you know, good promising signs for them and that so yeah. To probably bring it under the centre half and the centre midfielder and I think Arsenal will be having a good goal this year as well yeah. and then we've got United and City both in action obviously not playing last week against two sides who've both won and United are at home to Palace and a lot of people will see oh, it's a banker United win first game for them of the season but you know Palace a good performance against Southampton at the weekend beat United last year at Old Trafford and they're a tough team to play against as well Palace I think they're very underestimated by teams and then City going to Wolves where they, you know, they lost 3-2 last season and they lost at home at the Etihad I, I don't think there's many games harder to start a season than playing Wolves away I don't know if you agree with that yeah Wolves I think Wolves are a very good team like, they just look so organised and everyone knows what they're doing like, and yeah. you know these I reckon they'll have a good go again this year like, mm-hmm. to try and break into the top 5 at 6 really but um, yeah as watched yesterday in Sheffield United you know Wolves are 
you know the game was done in 10 yeah, minutes wasn't I'll it say, that was it two goals I'd say like you know him and Ezra uh, and Traore on the counter just can't stop him like, like no. no one can officially stop him you know they'll have a go, go again this year they've brought a few experienced players in and that so yeah, they'll have a good goal. Mm. And then the final one we're going to look at before we do uh, your predictions. Chelsea-Liverpool, obviously the biggest game of the weekend. You've got Chelsea, you've brought all the players in, and then Liverpool, obviously, defensively, been conceding a few goals since lockdown as well, haven't they? Obviously, mm-hmm. I know they won the title quite early on after lockdown, so there's that you know complacency and just you know, a bit of a relaxation um, from them, but they still obviously won a lot of games. How do you see that one fair out? Because obviously Liverpool done the double, over them last year in the um, in the league, but Chelsea beat them in the FA Cup. It's for me, it's like that's a real stand test for Chelsea in terms of playing against the champions with all these new players. And for Liverpool, it's making another statement for the league, really, isn't it? If you go mm-hmm. to Chelsea away with all these new players, yeah. not really adding anything again this year so far. What's what would what's your predictions for that one? I don't know. I think it's a tough game for Liverpool. Don't you like you know the other day they didn't look. Obviously, they scored, they won four three and stuff like that. But defensively, like they weren't, they didn't, they looked, just looked all over the place. Don't you? Mm-hmm. Whereas I reckon it'll just be a game you can outscore you. Yeah. Don't you? Like yeah. be um, be end to end and yeah, but um, yeah, it'll be a tough game. Like probably, hopefully, hopefully it's Chelsea win. Like, <laughs> but you know, probably no, man, Liverpool will probably end up betting you know, Yeah, it'll be interesting to see with Chelsea's back yeah. four. I think. Yeah, it'll how, be um, like, and again, the midfield battle. Will Liverpool, you know, will it be Henderson, Fabinho, Wijnaldum, or will he put a cater in there yeah. um, to try and unlock them? Obviously, if if Chelsea do try and sit back, which I, I highly doubt that they will, but I think Lampard will have a few um, selection dilemmas after last night with a few um, questionable performances. Yeah. So, you know, uh, we done our predictions last week uh, for the Premier League, so we're going to do uh, the top four, the bottom three, and then a surprise package for the season. So, top four starting with, with the team you think who's going to win the league. What's your predictions for um, that? I hope City win the league, but it'll probably be Liverpool. Like, <laughs> but, you know, I was City or Liverpool. Um, I think Chelsea, I'll just go for Chelsea will sneak in there as well, get third. And, um, don't even know. That's four spots difficult, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, the four, it's a tough one because you're obviously United, um, Tottenham, even Wolves, and. Everton as well. Yeah, won't go that far, like. But um, yeah, I would say I don't know. I'd say United. I reckon. I yeah. think United might do it. Get the fourth spot this year. That'd be. I think that'd be pretty similar yeah. to last year. Maybe one or two sides changing positions. Well, but Arsenal as well, like. Yeah. Arsenal as well. Yeah. It's it's hard to say, isn't it? Because obviously mm. you get these teams who are surprise packages as well, and you know your chef United's last year, the Wolves the year before, but Wolves have sustained it. And then for me as well, I I, I personally think Leeds will be up there challenging for that six seventh spot. Because of the the players that they've got, the manager yeah. that they've got, the, the football that they'll play, there'll be a good few teams struggle against them um, this year. Surprise package, obviously. We've uh, we've had a lot of people saying about Newcastle with the signs that they brought in last week being the surprise packages. Did anyone else for you in the league who you think will do better than maybe people give them credit for? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say I'd say Newcastle and, and Leeds. To be honest, you like um, hopefully heaven. Of the surprise packets, like, but you know, there's no really like the money that's been pumped into them, uh, you know, the juice to do well. But yeah, I think Newcastle will have a good goal this year with the sound, especially Wilson and stuff like that. They look, you know, they, they've got kind of goals, yeah, um, they've, they've strengthened the right yeah, areas, haven't they? Yeah, well. They're yeah. all clever, not just yeah, going so, towards anyone, yeah. I'd say Newcastle to be honest, yeah. I think yeah. Newcastle will have a good goal as well, yeah. It'd be interesting to see how they do because obviously they've had a cough tough couple of years yeah. with Mike Ashley and obviously it looked like they were going to get took over and it hasn't happened and then finally before we finish uh, the bottom three for you I think there's a couple that already look uh, weaker than the rest shall we yeah. say but the, I think that third relegation place is the one where there's about six teams again all yeah. fighting for it yeah I think West Brom Fulham um, I'll say Brighton or West Ham yeah I don't know I forgot to say on West Ham but just been on the edge yeah, now. Been on the edge for a few years. Yeah, been on the edge for a few years now, and I just think like, yeah. Do you think, think it was a strange decision then keeping David Moyes on? Yeah, yeah, but the, he's the kept same, them up. Yeah, kept them up and stuff like that. But that's strengthening really. Yeah, yeah. The, um, I feel like they they haven't really got it out on goal scorer. He's going to score a lot of goals for mm. them and stuff like that. And 
Yeah, I think West West Ham. I think I reckon the the due to go down. I think so. Yeah, interesting yeah. one. Yeah, I think interesting. Down. Very good. Well, Jack, uh, thanks for joining us today. Been a pleasure. Um, before we finish, make sure to follow us on social media uh, to keep up to date with everything going on. The Instagram is the Coaches Corner underscore podcast, and the Twitter is Coaches underscore Corn underscore. And make sure you can always listen to all the episodes on Spotify and Apple Podcasts at the Coaches Corner podcast. And we'll see you next time.